School Streets and Play Streets are timed road closures that enable families to have a safe environment for children to play and neighbours to connect. This film will guide you through the responsibilities of being a steward and managing a road closure safely, and it's simpler to set up and run than you might think. School streets are located on roads outside of schools and help schools to provide a safe school run, encourage families to travel actively and help improve air quality. We love school streets! School streets are usually led by either the school or the council, collaborating with residents and parents. These can happen every day during the school run or sometimes as a one-off event. Play streets are held on quiet residential roads and allow families to use the traffic-free space to play and socialise with others on their road. Play streets are usually organised and managed by residents. These can happen for up to three hours and as often as once a week, usually outside of rush hour. So as a steward, I've noticed that we got it's so much more friendlier in the morning, it's relaxed, the children want to come in because we can have a chance to talk to them on the road before they come in, put them at ease. If they're having a rubbish day, it's always good to give them a like, thumbs up and I'll come down and see you later. This video will guide you through the role of being a steward and managing a road closure scheme safely. So grab yourself a cup of tea and a favourite snack and let's get going. Please note this video specifically covers the stewarding role. The application and consultation process for road closure schemes is a separate and very important step. For support with school streets, you can contact Sustrans. For support with play streets, you can view the four simple steps video on playingout.net. Your local council can also provide support for both schemes and Sustrans offers a professional consultancy service. The process of setting up a school street or play street will vary depending on your local authority and what they have in place already. Stewarding at both schemes follows the same process. Step 1. Create a traffic management plan. Don't worry, this is not as complicated as it might sound. Step 2. Barriers and signage. How to use them safely. Step 3. Your role as a steward and what is expected of you. There will be only a few minor differences stewarding either a school street or play street scheme and we'll explain these as we go along. On rare occasions you may experience difficult situations which can be easily managed with positive conversations. We will cover how to do this later on in the video. Step 1. Creating a traffic management plan. All roads and streets are different and therefore careful consideration should be given before applying for either a school street or play street scheme. Main roads or essential routes may not be suitable due to high volumes of traffic. However, do check with your local authority before continuing your application. Quieter roads are more suitable for either scheme. When applying for either scheme, your local authority will want to see a map of where you're proposing to close the road. We call this a traffic management plan. The lead steward or organiser will be the person to organise and complete this. Don't worry, it's fairly straightforward. To create your traffic management plan, first walk along the road you are considering to close as part of the road closure scheme. Look for suitable closure points such as the end of a road or before a side road. We do not recommend a closure point on a bend. You might need to consider potential routes for diverted traffic. Invite others involved in organising the scheme with you whilst doing this to help you plan your scheme. Next, take a screenshot from Google Maps of the street you are closing. Most devices have photo editing software, which you can then mark your proposed closure points on your screenshots. You could also mark proposed diversion routes in a different colour on your screenshot. The traffic management plan will be used on your formal application form which is sent to the council or highways department when seeking permission for your road closure. When considering your closure points, the permission you receive to close the road will only cover the error you submit on your application. You cannot close the road beyond those specified points on your map. The plan should also be shared with stewards like yourselves and as well as local residents to help understand what will be happening on your road. 
You'll also find a copy of the map on your risk assessment, which will be completed by the lead steward or organiser. We decided to change the barrier points and um, where the street closer initially was due to the nursery approaching us, asking us um, if there was any leeway of moving it back because it was just causing a bit of an issue with the parents getting in and out of the nursery, which we absolutely did and it works really well. Step two, barriers and signage. We will now have a look at commonly used barriers and signs and how to use them safely. There are a number of different barriers used for road closures and you should take time to get to know your specific type of barrier. If you're a school street, these will most likely be supplied by the council or highways team. If you're a play street, some councils will provide signs whilst others might ask you to arrange your own. For most council areas, you must display a red road closed or a white timed road closure, no motor traffic sign for the closure to be legal. Depending on your authority, traffic management companies are likely to supply schools with the metal signage, which can be heavy to manoeuvre. This is a standard plastic barrier, often used by traffic management for roadworks. It has two feet which can be turned at right angles to prop it up. You can attach flexible signage to it using bungee cords. These barriers can be lightweight and will need to be looked after on particularly windy days. This is a concertina barrier, which can extend out like an accordion. Most have wheels for easy manoeuvring and those that don't will need to be lifted by two people. Keep your fingers away from the folding frame and be sure to apply the brake to stop it from moving. You can attach flexible signs to it using bungee cords. Some schemes use flexible banners, which can either be attached to the plastic barriers or between bins. This makes it a lot easier and quicker to set up your closure points. There's also the option of rigid cone mounted signs, which are a bit more robust and still lightweight. Other signage, such as green road open to people, can be used, but it must be displayed with one of the legal signs mentioned. Do check with your local authority for which signage you will need and what they can help supply. If you have to lift any equipment, make sure to keep your back straight and lift with your knees. When you move the barriers, always do so with two people. Let's hear from Duncan from Bristol City Council on how to set up signage on the road. Always start putting the closure on from the left hand side of the road. Now that is the side of the road that you would drive on if you were driving into the street. If you start the other side, as you get halfway across the road, you could still have vehicles trying to drive into the street. Now continue putting enough cones out until you get to somewhere around the middle of the road when you can then put the road close sign up and then the remaining cones beyond that. Now you reopen the road from the right hand side, so basically the position where you put down the last cone and then you work back towards the pavement where you actually had the original stack to start with. When positioning the barrier in the road, make sure that it's in the middle of the road but with a gap at the side or centre for cycles and scooters to get through. You may want to ask people on the cycles and scooters to slow down or dismount as there are people within the road ahead. When the barriers are in place, you should position yourselves behind the barrier within the closure or to the sides of the barrier. You should not move beyond the barrier into the road of moving traffic. Please keep yourself safe at all times. You should check with your local traffic management or council about the placement of your barriers and signage in the road as authorities have different regulations. You'll find the placement of your barriers for your road closure points will be included in the risk assessment completed for your site. Don't forget that your barriers and signs will need a safe place to be stored when not being used. For school streets, this can be just inside the school gates so they are easily accessible. At a play street, this could be in a residence shed or garden as long as you've been granted their permission. If you decide to use any toys, games or chalk on your road closure, make sure this is tidied away at the end of your event and also kept somewhere safe until you next want to use it. Dealing with the barriers every time, we come out about five minutes before we have to close the road. We carry the barriers down, they're nice and lightweight, they're not hard to carry. When the cars come, if we need to, we just pull them across the road and then at night we lock them up in a safe area so that they don't go missing. <laughs> Step three, stewarding. 
Being a steward will consist of a few key roles before, during and after the closure. These include managing a closure point, managing vehicle access, walking traffic through site and talking to the public. Stewarding teams generally consist of a lead steward who is in charge and two stewards for each closure point. You'll want to consider an extra person for a middle point if the road is long, on a hill or has any side roads within the closure. Everyone in the stewarding team should meet up 15 minutes prior to the closure to be made aware of any key information and to discuss any changes. This ensures everyone knows what is happening. At the briefing, stewards should be given essential equipment including high-vis waistcoats and whistles if they haven't already been provided. High-vis must be worn by all stewards during the whole road closure period. Regular events can benefit by using a rota of who is helping on which days and can include steward contact details. Have a plan on how you communicate with other stewards during the closure. This could be phones, walkie-talkies or shouting. Some locations have set up a system of whistles or hand gestures to easily communicate across a large space. As stewards, you will be responsible for the placement of the signage and barriers on the road. These must not be placed in the road outside of the closure times you have applied for. Barriers should not be placed blocking any dropped pavements or curbs in order to allow wheelchairs and prams access. A key part of the role is to manage the traffic within the closure and this needs to be managed carefully. Typically, closures will allow residents, blue badge holders and emergency vehicles through for access. You need to keep an eye out for vehicles who want to enter or leave the closure. A steward should talk to the driver and find out which way they intend to leave and clearly explain they will be walked out of sight to their desired or easiest exit point. When a vehicle wants to enter the road closure, a steward should have a clear conversation with the driver to find out if they are allowed access. If the vehicle is not permitted, a diversion route, parking space or return time should be suggested. If the vehicle is permitted or already parked within the closure, the driver needs to be made aware the steward will walk ahead of the vehicle and the car should follow at walking pace and maintain a safe distance. Whilst one steward walks the car to their destination, the other steward is responsible to move the barrier for access and stay at the closure point. People should use whistles or their voices to let people in the street know there is a vehicle being walked through. Families will get used to moving to the pavement when they are made aware that vehicles are coming through. You should always use your whistle or voice every time to alert people to vehicle movement and use it repeatedly if you have a long road or there is a bend in the road. Make sure everyone is aware when you're going to remove your barriers and open the road to vehicles. Give advanced warning and clear any play equipment off the street before you open it up. Remind parents that they are still responsible for their children when this happens. We have to look out for any cars and if they want to drive through the street we ask them to just use the street further down and if they need to park on the street then we um, shout for everybody to get off the road and then walk them um, down to where they want to park um, and then um, and close the road up again after them. School streets and play streets can have some variation in how they manage the movement of vehicles within the space. What we have shown here is standard best practice. When you have new volunteers join your scheme, you should pair them with a more experienced steward to show them how your scheme runs. Experienced stewards can brief new volunteers with all the information they need to be another awesome steward on your street scheme. Don't forget to point them to this video if they haven't seen it already. You now have all the things in place to steward your scheme. Next, we're going to talk about the things you may experience and how to deal with them successfully. It is very rare that stewards will be faced with a difficult situation with a member of the public at a road closure scheme. However, there are some simple and effective ways to deal with difficult situations. If there is someone agitated, you should empathise and show respect to the person at all times. There may be other factors to why they are agitated. Remain polite and calm. Breathing techniques can really help stay calm and focused in these situations. Listen, you can briefly reflect back their concerns to reassure them they have been heard. Be friendly and never raise your voice. Do not agree or disagree. 
and allow the person to talk. Do not get into an argument, this is not personal. Provide anyone agitated with options to help move the situation forward. For example, an alternative place to park or alternative time to come back. Allow them to make the final choice. When the person has moved on, make sure the conversation is reported to your lead steward so they are aware what has happened. If someone attempts to drive through the closure point, take immediate action to ensure your safety. Make others aware with your whistles or your voice so they can also take action to keep safe. If possible, take a note of the vehicle number plate so you can report the incident. Call or signal to other stewards for support at any point you feel uncomfortable in a situation. Do not hesitate to contact 101 or 999 if you feel it is necessary and believe someone is aggressive or confrontational. Remember, situations such as these rarely happen, but you should never feel in danger within this role. There was one who, he, he was a bit funny, but uh, we always come down and explain to them why we are doing this and they, they always understand but we always get some people doing so but the big number they accept and you know they appreciate what we are doing overwhelmingly the support for these schemes are incredibly positive it's common that people will ask about why you're running a school street or play street which can be for a variety of reasons at the steward briefing you should have a clearer understanding and feel like you can explain the purpose and benefit of the scheme. A simple answer would be making a safer space for children. This can be really effective, straightforward answer. Common benefits to running these road closure schemes include improving air quality, encouraging active travel, providing a social space for families and providing safer route to school. You may not have all the answers to the questions you might be asked. Politely let the person know you're a volunteer steward and the answer is an information you have to hand. Direct them instead to the lead steward if you think they might be able to help. Tell them all the great things you love about your scheme. Direct them to your local authority or us at Sustrans and Playing Out. For more information about setting up a scheme, check out sustrans.org.uk forward slash sustrans school streets or playingout.net. If you use social media, you can use hashtag school streets or playing out so we can see what you get up to. We hope you love your school street or play street scheme as much as we do. I like it because I, because I can play with my friends. <laughs> this is the best scheme ever and every school should have one. Yeah, the children started to play together, so the children at one end of the street got to know the children at the other end of the street. It was totally awesome. It was like, this is what I remember my street looking like when I was growing up, and I think it's really missing.